in terms of painting a picture of the organization, the DeVos uh, death squad, the operation, and the implementation of the drug of the Duterte drug war from the barangay to the national level. Kasi sinabi na nga ho ni Colonel uh, Garma, yung kanya mga revelasyon na the extrajudicial killings, yung mga operations under Duterte's drug war beginning in 2016 was just patterned after the drug mod, the uh, Davao model. And the Davao model can only refer or can only mean the DDS model or the Davao death squad. Skip muna po natin yan. Doon naman sa affidavit po ni Colonel Garma, presented and expounded upon the last hearing, I'd like to share some information we got and some findings on the Davao model of payment and rewards mentioned by Colonel Garma. This, lim this information is limited to the facts uncovered during the 2009 CHR investigation on the Davao Death Squad. Next, next uh, slide, please. The history of the DDS can be divided into two. The period from 1988 to 1998 and the period from 2001 to 2016. So may break po. The break in these two periods coincides with then Mayor Rodrigo Duterte's hiatus as mayor of Davao City when he was elected congressman instead of mayor in 1998 due to the three-term limit. So for um, brevity, I'll refer to the former mayor as MRRD. According to a witness in the 2009 CHR investigation, during the first period of the DDS from 1988 to 2000, the assassins were paid 15,000 for every victim. 5,000 goes to the uh, police handler and 10,000 to the assassins, who at the time consisted of rebel returnees aside from the active duty policemen who were their handlers. Their safe house was located inside the Nobelcom compound in Barangay San Pedro Davao. After the summary execution of targeted victims, the DDS members regroup, would regroup at their safe house and divide the reward. During that time, MRRD sometimes personally gave out the kill orders and the reward money directly to the assassins themselves. Upon the return of MRRD as mayor of Davao in 2001, the DDS was upgraded into the Heinous Crimes Investigation Section, or HCIS, located at the Almendras Gym Compound. The, the HCIS was an official unit of the DCPO, or the Davao City Police Office. The HCIS consists of both active duty PNP and civilian abanteros, abanteros or hit men. Most of the hit men are rebel returnees. They are supervised by PNP handlers. Each handler supervises three members. The task of the PNP handler is to give orders to his members as well as be responsible for their protection. According to the CHR witness, he was given a regular monthly salary of 5,000. During this time, the reward given to a team for every victim was anywhere from 13,000 to 15,000. 3,000 to 5,000 goes to the PNP handler. 7,000 to 8,000 was shared among the rebel returnees and 500 to 1,000 to civilian informants. The HCIS civilian personnel or rebel returnees directly received salaries as auxiliary service workers. The funds for their salaries came from the office of the mayor. Functions have also been specialized with members being designated to do either office support or field work. A team of one PNP handler and three civilian abanteros was given an average of three targets every month. May I now go also to the revelation of Arturo Lascanias. Yung mga naging findings so namin, although yung iba po doon, mga unofficial findings ng CHR investigation, were eventually confirmed by Edgar Matobato and Arturo Lascanias when they went public at the Senate 
with their stories and executed affidavits in 2016 and 2017. Matobato executed an affidavit and was filed with the Ombudsman as a criminal complaint against Duterte and other DDS members. The criminal complaint is still pending, it's the Office of the Ombudsman. The most comprehensive account on the DDS from its founding in 1988 up to 2016 is the affidavit of Arturo Lascanias, which was submitted to the ICC. This affidavit consists of 186 pages of gory details on the sociopathic behavior of Duterte as founder and leader of the DDS. Your 186 page affidavit Puyan, actually it was serialized in an investigative or feature story of Rappler in November 2021. Apparently, Rappler got, got hold of a copy of this affidavit and also the ICC's third agreement on limited use of information dated November 11, 2020. This instrument gave Las Cañas limited immunity as a witness in the ICC on this investigation on the Philippine War on Drugs. Nung 2024 naman po, Las Cañas reiterated the contents of his ICC affidavit in another serialized feature, this time published by Veria Files, entitled Conversations with Arturo Las Cañas. Ito naman po ang sinasabi ni Las Cañas, that during the period 1988 to 1998, so I'm just talking here about the organization, kasi napakadami po ng mga sinabi niya sa kanyang comprehensive affidavit. So I'm focusing on the organization of DDS dahil nga ito yung naging model ng uh, drug war. According to Lascania's ICC affidavit, during the period 1988 to 1998, when the DDS was constituted as the anti-crime task force of MRRD, DDS members were paid anywhere from 10,000 to 20,000 for every victim. This was the reward for the ordinary victims. Pag uh, mga matataas naman po, the so-called special project killings, they were re rewarded anywhere from 100,000 to 1 million pesos, depending on the status of the target. Civilian hitmen called force multipliers were given 3,000 to 5,000 per victim as their share in this reward. The DDS logistics and finances came from the Peace and Order or Intel Fund of MRRD. This includes weekly gas allowance, monthly cash allowance, and Christmas cash gifts. I uh, skip ko na muna po yung iba. Next uh, slide, please. Las Cañas also confirmed the CHR findings on the organizational structure of the DDS under the 8CIS, or Heinous Crimes Investigation Section, from 2001 to 2016. And this is as follows. MRRD, alias Superman, as the highest leader and mastermind of the DDS. SPO4 Sanson Beneventura, as the logistics, finance, and death clearance feature or officer. SPO3 Arturo Lascanias as overall team leader for operations and planning. SPO4 Bienvenido Laud as team handler and in charge of the Laud Quarry Mass Grave. And SPO3 Jim Tan as team handler and in charge of the Mandug Mass Grave. Actually, mas intricate yung, uh, yung inattach ni uh, Mr. Lascania sa kanyang ICC affidavit about the organizational structure of the DDS. What I just mentioned, I just simplified it to show who are really at the top of the DDS hierarchy. Most of the policemen handlers and their respective teams of civilian force multipliers were under the command of Arturo Lascanias as operations and planning leader of the DDS. So sinabi ko po, now that must be the Davao model na binanggit ni Colonel Garma. 